Hey y'all, here's a short video lesson about uh, some more things about secondary dominance. Let's just go ahead and start. Um, we've been talking about fives of, uh, which is a five in some other key, a dominant in another key. Well, we also know that a seven diminished has a similar function to a five, right? They're both dominant uh, functions. So like a secondary dominant, you can use a secondary leading tone chord you can have a 7 in some other key and it would have a similar function of tonicizing uh, something in a secondary key but 7 diminished of 5 would be weaker a weaker tonicization of 5 than 5 of 5 would be but essentially they do a similar thing so let me just give you one quick example if I'm in C major and I want to tonicize the 5 chord which is GBD a 5 of that G chord, as we've talked about, is, well, let's do a 5 7 of it. D, F sharp, A, C. That tonicizes the G chord. Now, if I want to just do a 7 of that, it would just be the 7 in the key of G, which is just F sharp, A, C. It's actually got a lot of the same notes in it. Um, so, uh, just a couple of things to keep in mind when you're using a secondary leading tone chord. Um, if you're tonicizing a secondary key that's minor, or tonicizing a minor triad, then it's going to be a fully diminished seventh chord in that secondary key, right? So you use seven fully diminished seven of that chord. If you're tonicizing a major triad, so you're you're doing a seven one in some other major key, you can use either the fully diminished seven or a half diminished seven. The one that would naturally occur in that key would be half diminished. Right, that's what we get in major keys, a seven half diminished seven. But it's not common not uncommon for uh, composers to prefer to use the fully diminished seven chord. So here's an example now of all the different types of secondary dominance and leading tone chords we've discussed. Uh, we're in the key of G major, so my tonic is G. My dominant, which I need to be tonicizing here, is five. G F sharp A. Okay, so in the key of D, my 5-7 is an A7 chord, which resolves to the 5. Okay, now here's a 7 diminished of 5. You notice that the two chords are very much related. In fact, if you take the 5-7 of 5 and just remove the soul, the soulless, then you get the diminished, uh, 7 diminished of 5. Um, now, we could take that 7 diminished of 5 and also add a 7th to it. So here's the 7 diminished of 5. We could add a B on top. And because on top that's a major third, that's half diminished. That's the kind that I would get in D major, right? That I'm tonicizing. Or I could add, change that to a fully diminished seventh chord. Right? So that's an option. That doesn't really come from the key of D. It's been added as a kind of a colorful um, chord change. Uh, but composers tended to like that sound. So here are the steps for spelling a secondary leading tone chord. They're, uh, they're, they're similar, but here's the first thing. Instead of going up a perfect fifth from the root of the chord you want to tonicize, you just go down a half step to the T. Right? You want to write a T do in some secondary key. That T is the root of the leading tone chord. So go down a half step and then write a diminished triad or you know a fully diminished seventh chord, I guess also a half diminished seventh chord, whatever is requested, on that leading tone. Just a half step, that's the important part. You just go down a half step from the root of the chord you want to tonicize. Okay, so those are the basic, uh, that's the basic approach. Um, and remember, the resolution for these is the same as for all seventh chords. If it has a seventh, uh, the sevenths go down. And if it ha this one would have a leading tone, because the root of the leading tone, seventh, is the leading tone, that root's going to go up. The leading tone's going to go up. And because these are tendency tones, you should never double them. So those voice leading principles do not change. Here they are once again, just so to, to hammer it home. The sevenths resolve down. The leading tones generally resolve up. Resolve up. Uh, there's a couple of exceptions we've seen. Uh, you can frustrate a leading tone in an inner voice. 
or if the next chord has a seventh, sometimes that leading tone gets deflected down if it's in an inner voice again to go to that seventh. There are, there are no exceptions though for sevenths resolving down. Just the leading tones sometimes do not go up to the tonic. Other than that, the voice leading is the same as for regular five seven chords and regular seven fully diminished seven chords. Just treat them as if they're working in that other key. Uh, I want to say a couple things about analysis. We're going to be moving into analysis of secondary dominance. Um, if you look at a score and you see a chord that has been altered with an um, accidental, and it's not the regular leading tone, for example, so it's something new. If it's been altered so that it's a diminished triad or a fully diminished seventh chord, right? that's how it's been altered, then you found very likely a secondary leading tone chord. You say, hey, that's a fully diminished seventh chord. What key would that be a, a seven diminished seventh chord in? And then the, the root of that chord would be the leading tone. So you just follow it up T do, a half step, to see what chord it's going to resolve to, what key it's working in. Now, if you found an altered chord using an accidental that altered it such that it was a dominant seventh chord, then that would be a secondary dominant, a five seven in a secondary key. And you would. You could think down a perfect fifth to see how that 5-1 would resolve to see what key that would operate in. So some tips for analysis. Um, a general observation that I that's mostly true, a lot of times is true. If you see something raised, uh, an accidental that's raised, it's very often going to be a leading tone, something that has been raised to become a leading tone. Uh, so that can be a shortcut if you see. That might be a leading tone, and then you can identify that secondary key very quickly. All right, I'm going to end with a summary once again of the, the new material we've got. There's now two kinds of secondary dominance. The 5 of x, that's stronger, and the 7 diminished of x, which is weaker. And either one of those could have a 7th as well. All right, both of them could you know, have 7ths. A so 5, 7 of x... 7 fully diminished 7 of x. Also possible to have a 7 half diminished 7 of x. And that's what it says here. It can be fully or half diminished. Mm -hmm. And of those, it's more common for composers to use the fully diminished 7 um, chord. Even if it's tonicizing a major uh, key, it, they tend to prefer the fully diminished sound. And this slide, I'll just let you read through, but the, here's once again the summary of how to spell secondary dominance. Here's how you do the five sevens in another key. And I've compressed the steps one and two, but make sure you do both parts of those. And here's the second um, for secondary leading tones. And if, again, if you have any questions of how to do these things, um, remember that it means five, seven in the key of x or 7 to minus 7 in the key of x and you can literally think in that other key and write that chord in that other key and it will always work. Okay that's it for today. Uh, you can take the quiz that follows.